वेलकम एवरीबडी हाय आय एम विद्युत जोशी फ्रॉम बेबलर फ्रॉम बेबलर अर्ली लर्निंग सो इट्स ग्रेट टू सी सो मेनी ऑफ यू हियर नाइस टू सी दैट यू हैव स्पेयर द टाइम फॉर दिस सेशन वी विल टेक ऑल द क्वेश्चन टवर्ड्स द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन इफ दैट्स ओके विथ यूर so uh, without uh, further ado i think let's begin the session yeah so our topic today is of healthy babies make healthy adults and uh, this is uh, wa- this session comes from our vision pack series and uh, here uh, we have today with us a uh, expert whom i will shortly introduce you to but before i begin i would like to uh, do a little uh, task and that is to read out a disclaimer so this session is not intended to give any medical advice our objective is to make parents aware about the importance of health in earlier in early years we are only going to mention broad and generally acceptable principles please consult your doctor or specialist about all specific questions and circumstances so with that under way uh, let's begin our expert today is dr tejal kanwar uh, hello dr tejal welcome Hi. to this session so uh, dr tejal is a gynecologist and a surgeon but most importantly she is a mentor for children in fitness and sport so other than being a medical doctor and uh, a- aiding birth of many babies She is also the founder of an interesting startup called Clinetics. I hope I'm pronouncing it properly. So Clinetics is a physical education company for kids. They work closely with schools and other organizations to promote physical literacy among kids. So welcome Dr. Tejal. It's uh, Tejal, it's great to have you with us and I have been uh, just like our parents, I've been looking forward to uh, have this discussion with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to interact with uh, so many parents and talk about what I'm very passionate about. Yeah. Thanks to everyone at uh, your team, that Nadler, and uh, uh, full of gratitude. Um, about Kinetics, uh, it's a fun fitness uh, gamified program uh, based on the fitness milestone. Which is uh, based on again motor developmental milestones uh, of children. Kinetics uh, we started about four years back with a movement uh, revolution, where we are pl- trying to make the child not only physically fit but to motivate and inspire children to pursue fitness and physical activity as a lifestyle and as a habit. So that's what Kinetics. Uh, is all about, but it has science at its core mm-hmm. because yeah. we are all from the team is from the scientific background. But we have packaged the program in a very fun, gamified, enjoyable way, yeah. so that children get engaged and entertained to be able to pursue uh, physical activity, to do same activity in life. That's what the uh, climate is all about. Yeah, great, wonderful. That's very nice. So uh, today we have you with uh, us to talk about this topic: healthy babies uh, make healthy adults. So, Dr. Kanwar, uh, why? Uh, what I would like to ask you is, uh, why is there a need of laying this foundation of health so earlier on in life? In early years, in fact, if we remember our childhood, maybe around the age of four and five. Yeah, we have to ask ourselves that question: whether our children today are getting the same amount of uh, physical activity that we used to get. Mm. Okay, so for many years, people have assumed, and even now we assume that in the early years, from zero to three, for example, yeah. children are running about, children are climbing, children are falling, and they are uh, jumping around. But are they uh, doing that particular physical activity? Enough. Is it enough? Right. Okay. Right. From our own childhood experience, we would remember how curious we were, how exploratory mm. uh, everything would be. We would want to, you know, do new things uh, in our yeah. physical activities, yeah. get outdoors. Now we are in all gated communities. Even though there are outdoors, absolutely, the same opportunities that we had, the same kind of exposure and the same kind of 
activity uh, physical activity number of hours i don't think the kids uh, that the world has changed yes absolutely i'm sure uh, most of the parents would identify with this they would be taken back to their childhood you know when we would just be climbing trees and playing hide and seek and i don't know what have you yes, so that yeah <laughs> so i guess uh, you know uh, parents um, uh, are bothered very much nowadays with you know even when the baby is born they think about the school that they are going to go into you know what should be the syllabus should it be icse ib boards people are talking about all these kind of things so they mostly focusing everybody knows about the three r's reading writing arithmetic uh, but definitely there is a fourth r which i would say which is rigor it's equally important which you're trying to tell us about yeah, yeah? Right. right 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 so uh, yes rigor is something that we are all looking out for so recent studies have shown Canada, even in the US, across the world, several studies in fact you know, that we need to focus on this factor. Yeah. A lot of children under the age of five are overweight, slightly obese, uh, and this is a very frightening mm-hmm. number. Uh, yeah. What happens to these children is there is a certain unwillingness uh, or probably even inability to lead a physically active lifestyle. Um, there is also unwillingness when these kids grow up. Uh, beyond the age of five and six, yes. they are a little overweight. They have an unwillingness to participate in sports or any activity. Yeah. Also, right. there is a potential risk of low self-esteem. So, right. coming back to uh, rigor, we mm-hmm. as parents and school are the main gatekeepers for the future generation, our children. Right. And we right. as parents have to become the role model. And set examples for our children. Yes, absolutely. And choose the right schools which is able to facilitate and provide these facilities, environment, the correct ambience for our children to get inspired, to get exposure to physical activities, mm-hmm. sports, or even fitness, gymnastics, even horse riding for that matter. Yeah. All yeah. these yeah. activities should be given to the children. Opportunities should be given. To and these will happen in later years. But in mm. the earlier years, it's very important to set a fundamental movement for the program for right. the children, starting from zero age. Yeah. So I would yeah. ask you, I mean, when you talk about uh, children should be active, now how active should a child be? Talk to us about, you know, in the context of infants, uh, toddlers, school age children, if you can just break it down for us a bit. Yeah, it would be nice if we break it down. So from say zero to say twelve months, okay, we do feel that the children are naturally active. Okay, mm-hmm. they are probably just about chronic, right? Yeah. But uh, uh, I feel that, uh, and many other studies have also proven that there is a lot of shackling of the children even to the age of one. There are a lot of car seats available, solars mm-hmm. now. Uh, high chairs where you put the child to uh, feed the child. I don't think these kind of facilities were available back then. There was a lot of moving around and a lot of active movement for the child uh, around the house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, at uh, that time. So, ideally, uh, this physical activity has been used. So, tummy time, interactive, floor time okay, has to increase. The play time has to increase consciously by the parents. Mm-hmm. And this restrictive car seat and stroller activity should be restricted for one of more than one hour. Uh, right. right. uh, from the age of one to two, for example, mm-hmm. uh, and up to uh, say three to three or two, you won't believe it. One eighty minutes of active play time is required. One eighty minutes. That's yeah. what three hours in a day is wow. required for uh, for our children. Right. And so this. Is uh, you know something that parents really need to take back for the session. We have to what is called as uh, reduce the passive screen time. There mm-hmm. is what is called as educational active screen time that we have to accept in today's new world, in today's tech-enabled world, where education is going to be uh, you know uh, uh, it will be imparted in yeah. a technologically. Easy way and user friendly way for our children and children who pick up very fast, uh, you know, on yeah. on the active educational tools which are available right. on gadgets. 
but this particular practical thing right you know has to be mm-hmm. the cartoon watching and unnecessary uh absorption of unnecessary content yeah. has to reduce where the child is just sitting and staring and not yeah. absorbing anything meaningful yeah then we come to the age uh, uh, of uh, uh, five plus mm-hmm. in that age group about 60 minutes of activity time it could be structured or unstructured um uh, ideally about the age of five it should be a very structured activity right and it should cover all the groups of muscles and Mm-hmm. effectively help in the bone and the muscle growth of the child and that happens by when parents encourage outdoor play yeah. and uh, take the children to playgrounds and parks and school grounds so Absolutely. that's the way i would like to uh, right. be right. Uh, yeah wait so i remember when i when my child was growing up was to take her to parks you know so you see yeah. that uh, monkey bars over there where you, she was always attracted towards it and i also oh. like the idea so I read up about it and you know I came to this concept of uh, brachiation. So I think this brachiation it kind of uh, strengthens the upper body. Uh, probably yeah. that's uh, one of the things but I'm sure it has got many other benefits. So uh, would you like to tell us something about oh, it? Oh yeah, it's a nice uh, way to start. Conversation of brachiation is all about swinging. Mm-hmm. and where the upper body muscles are used and there's a certain amount of balance and uh, space awareness of the child learns. so these are part of activities like swinging climbing spinning uh, mm-hmm. balancing and mm-hmm. and i coordination yeah. all these activities along with the upper body exercises as well as the lower body workout yeah. uh, are amazing for muscle and bone growth okay the child from the age of Uh, zero to say till puberty has mm. to grow elongate, right? There is a height increase that has to happen. Right. So that strengthening of the bones and the muscles when the child is getting elongated will happen not by some kind of medicines that we use, but by active play. The bones yeah. really become stronger and heavier when mm. you are, you know, putting resistance on them, strengthening exercise, yeah. body weight exercise. and that's what happens in the outdoor play and mm-hmm. child also when it's in a group setting gets to understand what is team work what is cooperative work yeah. and also learns to climb over obstacles and get over hurdles and right. that leads to a lot of analytical and problem solving exactly. positive uh, you Correct. know uh, responses in our child yeah yeah and child learns to get more and more confident and all yeah. the impact uh, what they learn in the playground okay mm. get them so confident and the self esteem increases and that yeah. also reflected in the academic also yeah, reflected definitely. in the class definitely yeah. i think as kids i remember you know the free flow play that we used to have mm. and then with equal zest we would study and things like that but Uh, nowadays maybe it has reduced a bit and probably we parents are also to blame in some way so it would be good to uh, li- uh, to have this discussion with you doctor so look to me i feel uh, we have overburdened our children with not only academic which yeah. i really should be there in school but also in tuition and yes. reduce yes. their play time i think that we need to consciously make an effort to be able to So why the child is the right environment? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So it's like even just like you know, education has a pedagogy. I'm sure fitness too has a pedagogy. So I, I'm I'm sure with kinetics and your uh, way of view view of thought, uh, I'm sure you've explored this uh, area as well. Could you tell us something about it, please? There's a huge movement going on across the world, especially it starts in UK and Canada, where um. what is called as physical literacy has uh, made a huge impact of us because we are seeing all these frightening statistics what is mm-hmm. physical literacy now when a child is learning abc okay and one two three is numeric as well as english yeah we are forming words then sentences and then complex uh, essays and that's how the child also fitness yeah. also has to be Taught to a child, it has to be learned by a child to be able to lead a healthy, functionally active life. Not only mm-hmm. to do their day-to-day activities, but even carrying a school bag. Yeah. When you're waiting for your school bus, you should be able to carry mm-hmm. a medium weight yeah. uh, school bag. 
if you are trying if you are waiting if the bus is coming up and you want to run a little bit for the bus you should have that uh, strength to be yes. to Absolutely. run carrying a school bag to the bus and telling the people to wait you know I'm, correct uh, here i am yeah. and that is what is uh, in the day to day life now what happens in a in a field in a sports ground like if a child is physically literate i'll explain more about it later but if a child is physically literate if he has learned the right fundamental movement skills say for example a squat or a lunge or yeah. the child has learned how to run very fast by you know we teach them we teach children in primary about uh, how to run in the correct form and where hands should be yeah. swinging yeah. Um, so when a child learns that and at the age of eight for example we put this particular child who learned all the fundamental movement skills into a football field mm-hmm, mm-hmm. compared to him the other mm-hmm. kids are not learned so yeah. he will be much superior to the other kids right. to be able to kick the ball to be able to run after the ball to be able to you know um, lunge bend in the correct way and in the correct technique and get on yeah. i think that is uh, what is fundamental movement skill and without even uh, knowing the child has become physically literate right so he knows uh, mm-hmm. and he has the knowledge to be able to lunge in a particular way or move in a particular way yes. because he's been taught that and he has that habit and it's ingrained in him so right. that's what is physical literacy yeah that the child has been taught and is motivated and inspired to lead this kind of a, a life mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i hope yeah. i'm able to explain, i have to be able to Yeah, yeah, very nicely. I would just like to uh, again differentiate if the slide comes up. What yeah. is physical activity and physical? Movement. So physical activity is where you move the energy of the body, um, your oxygen, your breathing, and increase in heart rate. That is activity. That is actual action that happens. And what is physical literacy? That is totally different. Physical literacy is the knowledge of fitness. Okay, I have so many activities that I can do. Come. I can run. I yeah. can. Uh, You're back. Yes, uh, I can be confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, please. And be competent in all the activities. So that's what is uh, okay. Yeah, and the child doesn't need to be like a international level athlete or some uh, super achiever. Physical literacy doesn't need to take the child to some superior level. You should just be a healthy, active child with what the physical child. Mhm. Okay. So I think uh, we will go ahead. Uh, yeah. All right. So that's great. I think you have uh, you know clearly enunciated uh, the differentiation between physical literacy and physical education as well. So uh, that's that's very nice. Uh, the activity, physical activity, and physical literacy. I think most of our parents have uh, got a fair view of it. Now let's 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 talk about. Uh, the nuts and bolts uh, <laughs> to some extent like the active play you know you talked about it stimulating fundamental movement so uh, if you can talk about that that's question 1 and also you know another important question which is there in my mind is like this exercising you know what impact a direct impact does it have on the baby's brain you did mention some parts of it but if you can uh, elaborate more maybe emotionally and physically in terms of oxygen levels you know if you can so, just tell yeah, us about so it in the younger age because we are all in the early years um, mm-hmm. it definitely improves the cognitive ability because for the the supply of oxygen that we see in our it helps in case the focus and memory also you know it supports the child as that a very happy and a positive feelings in fitness or any kind of exercise that mm-hmm. memory is always going to be there and it right. also affects the neurons and the synapses and it regenerates new neurons absolutely i can go on and on about yeah. how it happens in detail but um it's it's uh, hugely beneficial especially in the early years to let mm-hmm. the child move you know, instead of yeah. uh, shackling the child in one place that's mm-hmm. how the brain is definitely going to um improve in every way not only yeah. it's uh, you know the cognitive but emotional intelligence as well analytical skills also the yeah. happiness quotient in these are the skills 
there's a lot of pin high that the child will get at the age of two and three. You know, when the child is learning how to hop and he learns how to do side hop, when yeah. he learns how to do skipping at the age of four. I mean, a lot of parents are not aware that these are some of the exercises that can be taught so early in uh, life, and yeah. you know that makes the child hugely popular in anything yeah. that the child learns. Yeah, so it's like a, a healthy mind and a healthy body. Absolutely. That's uh, yeah. that's how the proverb probably came into because uh, it's already analyzed, and that's great. Yes. So you know, if you can just uh, a little bit, if you can talk about the uh, the fundamental skills like uh, maybe the uh, yeah yeah yeah. So yeah, uh, basically children need uh, opportunities you know, and land as well as water. So we we'll talk about land, and um, these are Basic three skills. I mean, uh, in the very early years, because they just learn to balance. So there's one is stability skills that they learn mm-hmm. uh, from yeah. the zero to three years, which is that skill, right. and locomotor skills as well as manipulation skills. Mm-hmm. Now, in stability skills, when the child is still very very small, they start putting their toes up to their head, okay, yeah. uh, pulling their legs up. So right. it starts from there, and the sitting, the chest. Uh, there should be a lot more of that. I think yeah. the children should be allowed to do a lot more of that. Then they start moving into the crawling, balancing their uh, heads and their, their knees, standing with stability with support. Right. Okay, so that's how it starts, and a lot more should be encouraged. Mm-hmm. Um, much more, uh, right. without fear of uh, letting them fall. Yeah. Then comes the local, the first is stability. Then the local motor skills like moving from one phase to Other, then comes the manipulation yeah. skills. Right. Locomotor is motion um, from one place to the other place, and when they start crawling, then walking, then later on at two and a half they hop, then side hop, then there be certain distance hop, and then they increase the distance of the hop. Then you can complicate the movement a little more by catching, throwing uh, something when the child is uh, hopping. So then comes the manipulation. When the child learns to hold a uh, certain object and throw, so there's catching, throwing is such an important thing for uh, skill for hand-eye development, hand-eye coordination, uh, mm-hmm. as well as uh, reflex uh, development. Right. And uh, letting go of uh, the object, throwing them in the uh, goal post, for example, or kicking them in the goal post. So these are some of the things uh, that the child learns. The child also learns about the body awareness. If they okay. are falling, okay, they will learn. Okay, this is the way I need to. I think parents must be aware of the milestones that the child has to develop. They can have a discussion with their uh, doctor regarding this thing. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So great. I think you talked about the stability skills, locomotor skills, and manipulative skills. That is wonderful. I do hope our parents were able to uh, listen to that. Um, so, so I think you know it's great developing this balance and manipulative skills. Uh, we actually can think of a lot of exercises relating to this. You know, even simply keeping a balance beam in a zigzag fashion, that itself stimulates a lot of uh, cognitive development. So as I was saying, even a simple gymnastic uh, um, routine, you know, if you add some music to it, that itself helps both the left and right brain development. So even in our babbler, uh, what we do is we have, uh, as many of our parents will be able to identify with it, we have these experience activities, you know, which parents themselves do at home with the babies. So the, that's uh, you know, it matches with a lot many things that you just said. and there's one small little insight which i would like to share with our parents you know there was a survey uh, recently done by the royal foundation uh, royal foundation by the duchess of cambridge better known as uh, kate middleton i would say and she did this survey ran this survey uh, on the five big questions that can help shape the healthiest generations and it may not come as a big surprise to our parents that the insight was clearly that the foundation lies in the early years so it is these positive protective factors from parents which act as the single huge contribution for this uh, healthy generation you know so for me that was nice it's like an endorsement on so many things so i quite like that yeah so uh, so doctor with this insight you know 
can you tell us what parents can do in this to help over here so parents can do a lot i think parents if they brought the children into the world it's their responsibility to make sure that the children get the kind of exposure in uh, leading a healthy uh, lifestyle so basically when it comes to physical activity we are talking about uh, fitness we should be talking about how much activity they are getting indoor as well as mm-hmm. outdoor now there are many things uh, where children do go to nursery places but as parents we also need to provide the certain right environment you can use very um, handy equipment tools which are available outdoors as well as uh, indoor so like there are certain uh, tree stumps or piles of leaves you know if mm-hmm. you are going into an outdoor space or a park you designate a space for a child mark right. that space and make sure that the child utilizes that space to be able to work on all the groups of uh, muscles and explore uh, the outdoor right. uh, it is important to develop some kind of sequence and a uh, habit for the child uh, start with the skills that the child has already acquired and complicate the skills mm. by uh, increasing the variations uh, within uh, that particular sequence all mm. this promotes a lot of curiosity in uh, children and yeah. motivates the uh, indoor you can use so many soft uh, uh, toys or soft balls bean bags where uh, it, it's safe for the children to practice throwing catching yeah. then you can go to slightly semi hard and then hard ball uh, yeah. where it is again safe for the children uh, create like for example create a plank so that the child learns how to balance you to uh, also con- i mean advise the parents to create this stepping stone with the child uh-huh. wants to go to the washroom right. create some kind of a stepping stone where the child is going to hop on one leg and go right. so then In fact, what I have been starting to practice is while I'm brushing my teeth, I'm standing on one uh, leg every <laughs> yeah. day in the morning. So yeah. I I don't lose my balance. Yeah. So it's very important for you. I'm sure everybody knows about the vestibular apparatus, which is in the ear, and it right. is very important to keep stimulating it. We are just mm-hmm. sitting all the time, especially in this pandemic. Correct. And it's so important to make sure that we move about, run about, and uh, practice our uh, uh, balancing. Then right. the other option is uh, in indoor. You can create a hot spot with a chalk or a tape, and right. that you don't even have to tell a child what to do. Right. The child is automatically going to go in that square and start hopping, start doing some workout in that and building that uh, square. Outdoor, right. there is a lot of opportunities. Um, you can carry bubbles, uh, uh, balloons. Uh, start mm-hmm. helping yeah. the child by. Uh, teaching him how to kick a balloon, um, then you know you can bring in small logs or rocks, and you know start uh, accessing more outdoor play in this uh, uh, fashion. So I can go on and on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. You know, so it's basically what you're trying to say here is like the parents need to be more mindful when they look at uh, you know activities for children. They need not be simple ones, but they, you can step them up as you go along the way. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so you will so, see wonderful changes in the yeah, children absolutely. when you start uh, doing that. Correct. In fact, uh, in our Babler routine too, you know, we have these experience tools where we actually tell our parents to take them to, you know, um, a sports center or a dance school. Then even our little, I think, parents will be able to identify with this again. You know, we have this tunnel run, a wonderful activity where the child, you make a tunnel in your house and the child like sort of uh, crawls through it. and yes. enjoys it maybe the parents can also crawl through it i used to do that you know with my daughter and i really enjoyed myself so even like some of our uh, application exercises we encourage the parents uh, take them out take even though the material is provided take it outside do it with your with the child's friends so you know like uh, just as an example a planet hopper is a, a good thing which probably some parents have already been using so that's great so mm, you know fitness does have a routine right all of us follow a routine uh, so how do we, how does one encourage babies to do this routine every day and uh, do we need to make a plan or how do we go about this absolutely please don't leave it to anybody you have to form a routine routine is the most crucial step yeah so yeah. Uh, since we are trying so hard to create a routine for kids 
or even their meals i think fitness and physical activity taking them down stairs uh, in the playground has to be a routine you know it has to be ingrained in the child's head to feel it five o'clock i think yeah encouraged by example and set an example yourself you know, like probably if the parent wants to go running in the morning or jogging in the morning the child will come look up to you and child will follow your example so and then the child goes into an auto mode Hmm. So you don't have to keep telling the child and keep nagging the child. It doesn't yeah. work. As the children start growing up, they are not going to listen to you. So in the early years, uh, this habit forming is extremely important. Set the routine, hmm. just like they are planning their sleep and their meal. Physical hmm. activity has to be become a part of it. Yes. and i think it's most important that parents should lead by example you don't change your routine you follow a physical routine and do it every day and when the baby or the child is seeing it every day it just natural yes this is a, this has to be so i guess yes yes, yes. It, it has to be then we uh, should all be aware that less than 3 years one it can it structured or unstructured thing is required and more than 5 years minimum of 60 minutes of nba is moderate to vigorous activity is is there yeah. and it has to be consciously implemented especially now yeah, in this challenging time mm mm-hmm. so yeah. so maybe uh, like if you could just uh, um, you know elaborate a little bit more like in this age group of uh, uh, in these age groups like the toddler age group what kind of activities one does um and also uh, a few things like you know um the basics that one must one can teach like maybe toddler stair climbing or ball rolling or something like yeah, that yeah sure so uh, unstructured play is very good uh, especially for younger kids uh, where uh, they can learn a lot of without any kind of a structure or a routine or a disciplined approach where there is an instructor unstructured yeah. is the best way for a child's curiosity and to right. be able to explore but at the same time we need to understand that in today's world uh, there are certain groups of uh, in today's challenging times so there are certain groups of muscles that are not being utilized especially because of too much of the and yeah. that is the reason why we need to encourage these particular uh, groups of muscles and target groups especially the glutes or say the back and uh-huh. strengthen uh, these uh, uh, muscles so nowadays people uh, be parents also Fear that the child will fall. Okay, I mean, let the children fall. All the routines are safe, but we need to understand that the kids also need to be able to learn to get up on their own. Yeah. And um, in that fashion, then we can start teaching them various activities. Like if a child has to start to learn to walk, it has to step and feel the ground. Mm-hmm. Start by toddler stair climbing. Yeah. and then when they start learning how to walk then for you know like throw a ball they learn yeah. how to start rolling the ball with their yeah. hand or with their uh, leg they will kick the ball mm-hmm. then jumping uh, and then kicking probably a basketball or a football yeah. uh, and then expose them to various uh, uh, track activities and mm-hmm. as i mentioned bubble catching or you know, ball catching uh, outside in the field right. pick right. up big equipment or big tools or uh, things in the house and yeah. then moving on to smaller uh, so that the children get used to the grasping the flexion mm-hmm. all that mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so that's about toddlers you know there's one little question that uh, pops up in my mind because i also like when my daughter was little i did that with her so i just want to ask you this as a question you know infant swimming I feel it's a great way to you know kind of stimulate uh, the neurons in the brain and uh, maybe for the muscle groups also so if you could tell us something about that as well yeah so see swimming is one of the best exercises it is as i was mentioning earlier land and water both should be given the exposure to uh, the kids should be given the exposure to so swimming is a full body workout there is not a single muscle which is not going to work out when mm-hmm. the child is in the water okay yeah. and with all the safety precautions of course the parent has to be there the lifeguard has to be there we have to expose the children to this particular exercise right. and it stimulates the lung capacity it stimulates the oxygen supply to the entire body the brain the hippocampus the emotional 
uh, centers, everything uh, in mm. the brain, and it it really develops the brain to a large extent. So don't wait for the child to turn a certain age and then put the child in the school. Uh, yeah. Start going with the children. Start exposing the children. Some children get very fearful of the water also because that's the fear you are transmitting from uh, right. from you as a mother to the child. Children right. are born fearless. Actually, it's, it's because of exactly. us that they become like that. Yeah. So we must be aware of our emotions and what the child is picking up from us. And yeah. of course, I'm, if I'm saying swimming, doesn't mean that you start throwing the child <laughs> in the pool. Yeah. Absolutely. But I, I mean, in, yeah. please be safe, of course, and be with the child. And mm-hmm. uh, yes, the swimming is is very very good. It's one yeah. of the best. Yeah, actually, uh, this is the most important thing. Actually, you your fear uh, gets transmitted so easily to the child, Absolutely. and that's the worst thing that can happen. That's a basic deterrent for any progress, I guess. So yes, the yes. child must, as you said, learn from falling, scraping their knees. We all learnt like that. I think uh, maybe uh, at that time it was not just one or two children per family. Uh, there were maybe three was the minimum number probably. So. our parents just let us do a free unstructured play i would say without really knowing it so that's great would you uh, like to you know like age wise if uh, you would like to say something like some kind of activities for age 2 age 3 if yeah, so we one discuss or two the toddlers so age 2 onwards basic balancing agility can also set in then we can go up to uh, speed uh, and Beyond the age of, uh, I mean, at the age of three, we can talk about following the leader. Parents usually have to become role models because the children yeah. are going to uh, imitate you. So there are various games like mirror, mirror, follow the leader, and yeah. do the workout, um, do the kind of play that you want the child to learn. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that a start, and then yeah. of course there are uh, various things that are available. Um, the teachers are available and. Uh, create different different environments, optical pieces, animal crawls is something which uh, I really vouch for. Mm-hmm. Uh, various types of uh, body weight uh, animal crawls, so getting on all fours. Yeah. I mean, can you to, yeah. can you maybe hop like a kangaroo or whatever, pounce like a bear, something like that? Absolutely. I think and babies enjoy that. Really enjoy that. And, yeah. And let me tell you, parents should be able to do it, but nowadays. Parents are also a little unfit, and they are not able to do that. <laughs> right. So, uh, I mean, bear call is like bear call is like easy, but if you, uh, you know, you have to go into a duck walk, yeah, or say, uh, a <laughs> yeah. crocodile walk, or uh, you know, so these things uh, we should be able to do. But and it really helps with our hip mobility, especially yeah. now in this after this lockdown. Correct. Try doing <laughs> that, you know, you feel that oh God, I'm not able to do that. So, Yeah. We all need to get more flexible and mobile in our joint right. to be able to uh, teach our children. So maybe after this session, all our parents can do a duck walk and see. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> yes, that would be very useful. Simply, so, I mean, just uh, say jumping rope also at the age of four and a half, five is also yes. extremely important. Useful, yeah. And uh, you can have a tight rope and you know, you know, put it on the floor. And mm-hmm. ask the child to stay balanced. Balance. This is another thing that I remember. Um, yeah. So these are some of the things that you can start uh, doing: rolling mm-hmm. down and uh, mm-hmm. you know, letting the child fall into all. Uh, right? right. I mean, nowadays a lot of these play stations have come up where there is that that huge foam is there and children keep hopping and uh, jumping around. But mm-hmm. being outdoor is very important. Nice That's so important. Yeah, they should pursue a sport also. I'm sure. So, yeah, we are after learning fundamental human skills, they must at yeah. least go to these sports which I have to take. Hmm. Not just the team sports I and mean, not just individual sports. Team sports. Yeah, team yeah. sports is something very important. Very, very, very. Great. I think that was rather detailed, uh, and I'm sure our parents have uh, gained a lot of things from this. So that's really useful. and i think you talked a lot a lot about uh, you know very clearly about physical literacy and we here at babler definitely believe in this and we've kind of tried to provide this holistic uh, development environment for babies you know both physical and logical so i think this session was rather useful uh, i hope i hope our parents too have uh, uh, felt so 
so uh, maybe we'll just take a pause here and uh, we can take questions uh, uh, if parents have any questions for doctor yeah somebody was talking about frog jumps in school times yeah i'm sure even i remember jumping duck walks frog jumps we used to do that yeah i hope uh, yeah some a parent is saying definitely awareness on this concept i think everybody can see the chat so if there are any questions we would like to uh, take them okay so one parent is asking a question but before i just take the questions there is this disclaimer that i would like to read once more that this session is not intended to give any medical advice our objective is to make parents aware about the importance of health in early years we are only going to mention broad and general accepted principles please consult your doctor or specialist about all specific questions and circumstances so having said that uh, there is this one question Mm what is the minimum age to begin physical activity so a structured physical activity should start by the age of 1 and 1/2 years where it is balancing and about motor coordination that mm-hmm. is the two basic skills that we start right. with mm-hmm. and that is being implemented uh, in preschool that you can try yeah. Too, but it should be implemented by parents as well. Certain basic hand-eye coordination and reflex movements, and uh, so by one and a half to two, it should start. Right. Okay. Good. So uh, there's our um, parent Komila Harshini. She is asking how to enhance a kid's curiosity uh, by baby. When baby eighteen, eighteen, eighteen months. Yeah. 18 months old. again by giving a lot of exposure to various uh, environment mm. and taking the child out uh, to yeah. the park See, being indoor is now we realize that we as women cannot be so much indoor in this last one year i think we all have learned uh, uh, that in 2020 the whole world right <laughs> covid has taught us a lot many we lessons we have to move out we have to be outdoors and Uh, so if we are feeling that can you imagine a child who needs to be curious who needs to see the the right. world outside who needs to see the open ground mm. it's important that that we need to start uh, awakening the curiosity of the child uh, how to enhance that is by taking the child outdoors uh, by giving him a exposure to active educative uh, screen time so even if you are uh, home bound you can give exposure to the educational screen time there is a lot which is available also on devda there is so much of learning that can be done uh, which is extremely beneficial uh, for the neurological development of the child so definitely keep stimulating the child with uh, and engaging the child with uh, different different uh, activities and you see yeah. the child really learning so fast and you be surprised yes yeah. <laughs> absolutely i think that's uh, so curiosity is something that you know the child develops you just provide the opportunity for it and they become yes. curious and curious absolutely. that's great so yeah. uh, there is uh, another parent asking uh, how to increase you know best food for toddlers uh, okay so food is something which is geographically as well as culturally very very there's a huge variety but having a be- well balanced diet is what is very important of course in our current discussion when we are talking about healthy babies we have to keep nutrition in mind but that is another completely another area that we can you know you can have another expert yeah, talking absolutely. about it we can have probably so, a nutritionist or somebody else absolutely so best food for yeah. toddlers is like a really vast uh, subject you that you can, can yeah. yeah 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 absolutely So there is another parent who is asking how to increase concentration through which activities? So focus activities again, hand-eye coordination, your uh, reflex activities, so mm. focus-related um, activities are very important. Reduce yeah. the time that they have, uh, you know, while they are playing, uh, just passively looking at the screen. Right. That right. is really going to impact the child's uh, memory focus. Yeah. So first, start with that. Yeah. Don't yeah. say okay. How do I increase it? Correct. But yeah, first try reducing 
social activity which is going to negatively mm. impact the child first mm. reduce that yeah. and then and of course what is uh, most important is sleep uh, today sleep even though uh, we are seeing a lot of lack of uh, sleep in about the age of five but right. sleep even in the early years is extremely important uh, yeah, they need course. to sleep enough and that is very optical to remember it is really improved when yeah. they are getting enough rest and enough sleep. Right, absolutely. Sleep is the uh, nothing as restive as sleep. It's very yes. important for growing. Yeah. So there is this interesting question from uh, Shweta Gaikwad. She says, <laughs> "Nice, I like this. So it's fine. My uh, is it fine that my baby coming with me to the gym and uses a treadmill, one kg dumbbells and boxing under our supervision itself? She is twenty-two months now." Absolutely not. <laughs> 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 so I mean, uh, uh, she could become the next Mary Pom. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> definitely she uh, is too small. Twenty-two mm. months is really, really small, and uh, not on the treadmill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We advise body weight training only up to the age of puberty, certainly. Mm. Uh, beyond that, we uh, advise uh, light weight training. We do mm. use kettlebells, uh, very light, you know, uh, small, tiny kettlebells, uh, one kg kettlebells for our uh, children in our sessions, uh, where there is a good amount of muscle development with resistance training. Mm. Uh, but for such small kids, even treadmill is very unsafe, you know, unless yeah. you're holding the child, right, it's right. very unsafe. Yeah, so rather than the uh, treadmill or picking up dumbbells, I think this uh, brachiation exercise would be more useful. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so brachiation, swinging in on monkey bars, yeah. uh, climbing on top of those uh, you know equipments which are there in the outdoor spaces, uh, that is uh, extremely important for a child and uh, not weight. I mean, mm-hmm. not dumbbell. Right. So another question which uh, Saida uh, is asking. Is uh, could you please repeat at what age to begin uh, physical activity? Yeah, yeah. So unstructured physical activity should happen throughout, even for us adults. Yeah. And structured physical activity must start at the age of one and a half to two. Mm-hmm. By that age group, you must start a structured activity. You can put the child in a structured activity class uh, for even fifteen minutes, where the instructor is making sure that certain Coordination, balance, movements are honed, and in yeah, that yeah. particular activity is important. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, structured activities. What are they? Basically, they are uh, planned activities by an instructor, by a certified instructor. So that is what a structured activity is, where there is a proper plan. Uh, like to go ready for sessions, and you make sure that uh, that kind of structure is followed so that a certain goal is achieved with, uh, based on the milestone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I missed one question. Somebody was saying, "Can I ask about kinetics?" Yeah, I think uh, Dr. Kanwar did mention in the beginning, but maybe a short. If you, if somebody, since someone is asking about it, please. So kinetics it. is uh, like how we are teaching workouts and uh, to adults, right? Uh, but in children, we cannot use the same kind of workout. We, uh, what we do is we have created different new workouts for children depending upon their age and depending upon their milestones that need to be achieved. For example, by the age of say five, the child should be able to jump a rope, okay, mm. on his own. Mm. The child should be able to ride a bicycle by the age of five and a half without pain. Mm. A lot of parents are still not aware of that. So hmm. we help the children in our session, uh, and and create this awareness with the parents that the children need to learn these basic skills, and these all these skills are gamified in a fun way, yeah. and that's how it is. It, it, it's scientific at its core, but yeah. it's packaged as a uh, very very entertaining for the child. Right, child gets inspired. Correct. I think basically gamifying it all is very important, and even yes. Even uh, you know a simple thing like you know you I have seen this so often like there's a gr- group of kids playing and there's one child standing outside and looking at uh, it. so you know even an, as an adult I would do that uh, as a, as a, when my uh, daughter was growing up I would do that like you know okay just join the game of these children with this child so that child gets drawn in so it's very important as parents 
that you yourself do an activity so you know you might want to play a game of lagori or something with your children with your children's friends yeah. that yeah. that helps a lot i think yeah so i guess um, so it's each toddler is easy yeah so mm-hmm. i be in kinetics we what we do is become a child with children yeah so uh, that's the easiest thing. i mean i'm just addressing the word it really comes only when you really go down to i mean go to the child level and become a child that it should not be when we send our instructors to teach children we they are trained the instructors are trained to smile a lot to fool around to play about with the kids more than becoming a teacher to the child or a guru right. to the child you need right. to become a child that's correct. the easiest way so then only the child will be able to relate to correct absolutely smile a lot <laughs> fool around you know become a joker uh, and, and make the child laugh a lot if it's yes. a daughter uh, start uh, what do you do uh, making them uh, uh, laugh a lot and <laughs> Yeah. Just uh, having a lot of fun, and that's the positive impact that the child will uh, remember. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's great, uh, Doctor Kanwar. You've been very, very helpful, and I think very insightful. I so. Yeah, I'm sure uh, our parents also identify with that. And I guess if there aren't any more questions, uh, we can uh, end the session. I would like to thank all the parents. Uh, thank you for a great participation. and don't forget to do your duck walk after the session <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you dr kanwar thank you very thank much you. look forward to many more sessions with you like this thank you yeah yeah jitendra thank you thank you for having me and it was really fun thank uh, you yeah. yeah great so i can see some of the parents uh, payal ahan shagun Uh, the duck walk please send pictures to the group and yeah please do do, do send us <laughs> correct and maybe our next session we can all do a duck walk session. but on a serious note try yeah, doing the duck walk on a regular basis because i mean the pandemic has really killed our hip joint absolutely yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and in fact i'm going to do that now i'm <laughs> really motivated for that now okay. okay great so thank you very much for joining the session Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye.